Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the regular scheduled meeting of the City of Griffin Board of Commissioners, April 26th. We'll begin by Commissioner Cynthia Rigor leading us in the pledge, followed by Commissioner Tinsley leading the invocation. Please join us. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we're here today to ask for your blessings and guidance and performance of our duties as elected officials. We pray for strength, love, knowledge, and understanding. Help us to recognize and solve the problems that are presented. Make our solutions fair and just to the best interests of everyone. Help us to work to overcome our shortcomings and keep us united as a team to work for the betterment of the city and its people. We pray in your name. Amen. Thank you. First item is approve the agenda as presented. We have a motion to approve the agenda. Ms. Murray with motion, Mr. Brock with a second. All in favor, please signal the raise your hand. Six zero. Under presentations and delegations, first we're going to recognize the one and only Rita Bagwell, the March 2022 Strongest Link in the Chain Award recipient. <coughs> Budget Department Director Jennifer Freeman will address. Jennifer. Hey, Jennifer. Welcome. Hey, you guys doing all right? <laughs> yeah. So, I'm definitely not as pretty. I'm not as well a speaker as Jennifer, but I'll try to do okay here. Um, Cynthia, thank you so much for nominating uh, Rita for the strongest link. And congratulations, Rita. Rita is definitely. Um, our, our rock star, the uh, customer service, she's the glue that keeps everything together there. Um, she's the face of the city of Griffin, and we definitely couldn't do it without her. Um, I did want to thank Commissioner Ward for the nomination. Um, I'm truly honored and humbled. I know there are many deserving employees that are worthy of, an, of this nomination each month, and to be named the strongest link among those nominations means a lot to me. Um, often when someone asks, Rita, what do you work or what do you do? And I reply, I work in customer service at the utility department for the city of Griffin. The answers to that original question are not always favorable. So many, I could never do that, or I would never do that, follow. <laughs> But for me, it just comes natural. I would do nothing else. Maya Angelou defines customer service at its best. People forget what you said, forget what you did, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. I have been the customer service manager for almost five years now. Shortly after I became manager, I read that quote by Maya Angelou. That quote became so much more than words. It became my mission statement personally and professionally and I challenged my team at that time to make it theirs. That mission is the background behind my nomination. It all began with an elderly customer sitting in our lobby, frustrated, looking over his statements one day when I walked out of my office. I smiled to him and said, is there anything I can help you with, sir? And he uttered his dissatisfaction, how he disliked the city of Griffin, my team, our utility services, and at that time, me. I smiled again, and I knew he was angry at the situation, but not me personally. I offered him a step to step into our conference room and for both of us to review his statements together. Still mumbling under his breath angrily, he accepted my offer, and I'm going to answer, he reminded me of my grandfather. We laid out his statements one by one. I noticed his usage did escalate one particular month, and it never went back down. He explained it was because he had a family member move in due to COVID related issues and that they were still living with him. Usage went up, income did not. 
I asked him if he had applied for the CARES utility assistance and explained that his circumstances would qualify him for the assistance. His face softened. He then explained that he did not have the means to apply online. He didn't have a computer nor a cell phone. I advised what he would need to apply and offered to assist him with his application online. He went to retrieve the needed documents and returned immediately. We sat in the conference room together and completed his registration online. Once submitted, he sat in tears thanking me for taking the time to stop in the lobby to offer him help. He called me an angel in an answer to his prayers, not what he called me originally. <laughs> I called it just doing my job. Before he left, he hugged me and he thanked me again. Then his perception of me and our department was then favorable. When he left, I sat at that same conference room table and cried. I knew there were others in our community that were in the same situation. I then advised our customer service team to offer to assist customers to apply for the CARES assistance if they mentioned they did not have the means to do so themselves. That day ended with two important things. One, my customer changed how he felt about myself and my team by the way I made him feel. Two, confirmation was sent at five o'clock that afternoon that the customers are approved for the assistance. My team was able to assist several customers in this manner following this opportunity with my customer. Speaking of my team, I tell my work family each day that I have many ideas and that I always have a plan. That is followed with, and some of those ideas and some of those plans actually work and some don't. Without my team putting into fruition the plan that I set forth with my customer, I would not be worthy of this nomination. I would like to ask my customer service team and family to stand. family and I'm so very proud of them. We win as a team and so this nomination is received humbly from me for them as well. Strongest link is how you make people feel. Thank you again Commissioner Ward for this nomination and I say just live by the golden rule. Treat others like you want to be treated. Thank you. Ms. Rita. Ms. Rita. Sorry. Uh, I just wanted to I've been on the board now since my 19th year. And when we when I came in here along with the other commissioners, we lived customer service 24 seven. It was continually phone calls and just, um, just try to figure it out. And I rarely get any complaints. I mean, your team, is, the whole team is amazing. We just appreciate the service that you give the city commission to do this community and what you do every day. Thank you. you. We thank y'all support. Thank you, Ms. Ford. Can I? Can I have the other two? Sure. You have the whole team? Mm -hmm. If that helps. Come on up. Rush, we're on a deadline. Okay. Here, let's do it. Let's do this one. Well, I'll put you up here. Can we? Yeah, we'll get that. Sorry. <laughs> 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 Coming back to the back door. Oh, okay. It's a great group, is that? <laughs> <laughs> One. Three. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Our next agenda item is agenda item number two presentation of proclamation for the 53rd Annual Municipal Clerks Week. Ms. Susan, Mr. you if you'll please come forward. Welcome. So we have a proclamation in celebration of the 53rd Municipal Clerks Week, May 1 through 7, 2022. We're in his office of the Municipal Clerk, a time-honored and vital part of local government is the oldest among public servants established nationally first in the Plymouth Colony early keepers of archives were often called 
remembrances or town criers and were necessary since many were illiterate. And whereas municipal clerk provides a professional link between the citizens and the local governing bodies and agencies of government at other levels, and whereas responsibilities of the municipal clerk are diverse and vary greatly from one jurisdiction to the to another, but mainly focus on documenting commission meetings and workshops, agendas and minutes, publishing ordinances and resolutions, managing vital records, responding to open records act requests, your favorite, ethics filings, elections qualifying, and pertinent correspondence. And whereas the general the Georgia Municipal Association, Clerks Association, established in 1956 to promote integrity and excellence for clerks, provide educational curricula, professional development, and networking opportunities to strengthen and support clerks and their image. And whereas municipal clerks have always pledged to be very ever mindful of their neutrality and impartiality, rendering equal service to all, serving as the information center on functions of local government and community, striving continually to ensure administrative excellence. So therefore be it resolved that in honor of municipal clerks week, the city commission recognizes our municipal clerk and assistant clerk, and at this same time urge the citizens of the city of Griffin to support the clerks and extend appreciation for the vital services they perform for their citizenry. We hereby declare that a copy of the proclamation be spread upon the minutes of, of the proceedings of the board of commissioners Board reflecting the seal of the city of Griffin to be affixed on this the 26th day of April in the year of our Lord 2022, during the week of May 1st through 7th, 2022, shall be proclaimed Municipal Clerk Week 2022. Signed Douglas S. Holbert, Mayor, and Jessica W. O'Connor, City Manager. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Agenda is to a presentation of water plant of the year award to Still Branch Water Treatment Plant staff by Eric Osborne, Georgia Section of American Water Works Association trustee on behalf of the Georgia Association of Water Professionals. Director of Watershed Management, Dr. Brent Keller, will also be here to address. Y'all come on up from Still Branch, guys. I've been known Eric for a long time, and as Commissioner McCord once said, be brief, be brief. I just want to thank my team for when be, <laughs> be brief. Be yeah, be I got brief. it. But anyway, um, I'll let Eric explain to you about the award. But uh, this is the second year in a row that they've won it in that category, and Eric will explain it. And I've been known him for a while, so he'll do a good job. <laughs> Welcome, sir. Well. There's actually several awards I'm going to present tonight. Uh, uh, this is the main one, but in addition, uh, Griffin Water has won the taste test for District 4, so I have the certificate for that. Uh, they didn't win the state, but uh, they won District 4, which is a large area, and they also won the Platinum Awards for both water treatments, the Harry Simmons and the Still Branch. And that's the 15th year that they've had zero violations at all, federal and state. And that's that's a big achievement. And if you have one violation, it drops you all the way back to starting point uh, to, to get back on that list. So that's that's commendable. Uh, but that, like you said, the second year in a row, they've won the uh, surface water five million gallon uh, through 14.9 million gallon. Uh, that's a, a fairly large category and a team of people comes and goes through the plant with a fine tooth comb. I think it's actually more extensive than the state's sanitary survey that they do every three years. So to win this in order to, and also keeping in all those compliance is, is a great achievement. So, you know, it's my pleasure to present this, this award to this team and it, it takes a team to do it. So yep. congratulations, y'all. Certificate. Great, Dr. Keller. <laughs> Legacy of Still Branch. 
see you later. <laughs> Y'all in there. Come on in. Act like you like each other. Oh, I just say that to my mom. Ready? One, two, three. Huh? Thank you. Take care. Come to Griffin to tell you. Thank you. It's a regular trip. Good job. Good job. Everybody didn't see you earlier, but you didn't see you. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for getting here. Get some cardio. <laughs> Moving to our next item is to recognize the city of Griffin for receiving the government finances officers association designation designated distinguished budget presentation award for the fiscal year beginning July 2021. Chief Financial Officer Marcus Schwab will address. Good evening, sir. All right, good evening. Speaking of teams, it takes a team to make something like this happen. Uh, so the last time the city actually received this award was back in 2004. So we have worked <coughs> diligently and I want to recognize city manager for allowing us the initiative to do the take this on. B, I want to recognize Gid for his being instrumental in negotiating and the technical stuff and then the other folks who need to be recognized are all the directors and the leadership who participated in this. So kudos to the city of Griffin and the, the commission here now for being the owners of the trifecta or the triple crown. You have the audit award, the popular financial award, and now you have the distinguished uh, budget presentation award. You're back on the map, so congratulations. <laughs> Appreciate your service. Thank you. Moving into item five, recognize the graduates of the 2022 Citizens Fire Academy. Fire Chief John Hamilton will address. Good evening. Good evening, Good evening sir. It's been a while since we begin, begin had an opportunity to uh, bring a large group of people here so there's a lot of large groups tonight so i'm excited to be here with this group tonight this is our 2022 uh, fire academy graduation we had a lot of fun this year we had great weather to start with no nights were uh canceled due to weather first time ever for us uh, i had a great group of citizens we had so much fun together they had no time to sit around and do just hang out do nothing it was not a uh, even, I don't know they exactly expected what they got, but uh, we were cutting cars, putting out fires, doing medical emergencies. They actually got to participate in pretty much every single thing that we do. And I think they learned a little bit of a, a, a different understanding about what we do and how we do it. So I'm very thankful for them and as well as my team, because I talked a little bit on the first night and then I stepped back and let them have it. Uh, and they did an outstanding job. So tonight I'd like to, recognize them and if you'll i will uh, call them forward and chief rock uh, has something to present to them uh the first one i know she's not here tonight uh serena angles but she uh, had uh, family issues so she couldn't be here tonight uh, but she is actually our, our first one up tonight uh vicky cardell and just so why she's walking up so i can say it uh her husband's actually a retired fire marshal of ours he got to come out and play with us the last night <laughs> we're happy to have both of them uh amberlynn jackson and she will come on up hobble up actually <laughs> we, won't, we won't talk about how that yeah, it, it would be on EMS night. Miss Cardell, please yeah. don't leave. Yes. Let me get a picture. And she was walking towards the ambulance when that happened. I don't know. Long story, you had to be there, but yeah. Uh, yeah, please stay. Uh, Kim Moss. And we'll go ahead and read Rebecca Moss as well. David Smith. Uh, Nancy, I don't believe she had it. she's not here with us tonight. Uh, Regina Stevens, no, Regina's back there. Uh, Leslie Taylor, 
And I don't believe Chet is with us. Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. Sorry, couldn't see him over there. Chet's with us. I had almost all of them here. This is our group. It started out a little bit bigger. We had a few that had some uh, things that prohibited them from competing the whole, the whole thing. They were outstanding. Troopers had a lot of fun. We put them to it. I might have a few applicants for a, a job, so I got a couple openings for them. So. But they did a great job, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody have anything to say? Yeah. Thank you. I need to get the foot in. You need to get the foot in. Chief, I would. You would. I would. Okay, I need to get a quick picture. Okay. I'm having trouble. Can you move? Come on. Like behind. They're around you, buddy. Regina, get on the floor. Get up here. One. Two, three. All right, great. Is there a special person like to make any comments? I do have one that would like my comment. I'll I, I just make it real quick. Sure. Just for the record, I'd like to thank Chief Hamilton for the spectacular job that he did at the time he put in to putting this school together for us. It was a fantastically enjoyable six weeks, eight, and eight, eight weeks, weeks, eight weeks, <laughs> and the, his, his staff and his people are just incredible. The, the, the amount of work they put in, uh, the time they spent with us, that I'm sure they would rather have been spending with their families and doing other things. But they really did put together a fantastic uh, presentation, and I hope they'll keep doing it in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all. Thank you. Yeah. Moving into citizen comments. At this time, the mayor will support for comments from the audience and comments you relate to a specific agenda item not listed on the agenda for a public hearing or to be concerned within the jurisdiction of the city. Commission meetings serve the purpose of conducting city business and are not a form for the expression of opinion. The mayor reserves the right to limit comments to matters remaining city business and may refer speakers to the city manager or other staff for resolution. With that being said, is there anybody on my left side like to come before the board? Anybody on my left? Is there anybody on my right side like to come before the board? Last call. Okay. Moving into public hearings. Public hearings are conducted to allow public comments on specific advertised issues such as rezoning, ordinances, policy development, operating budgets, and other legislative actions to be considered by the city commission. Item six has received comments regarding a request to, for a special use permit to allow the use of a single family dwelling unit in a planned commercial district PCD for property located at 214 South 12th Street. Director Planning and Development, Chad Jacobs will address. Good evening, sir. Welcome. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good to see you again. Uh, so what you have before you again, we've had a few of these kind of come up over the last couple of years. Uh, this is where you've got a property residential uh, structure that's in a commercially zoned district and the uh, applicant would like to use the structure uh, residentially. So they have to go through the special use process. So we are recommending approval of this as we have done in the past uh, with the following conditions. Uh, that the structure shall meet all requirements of applicable residential codes uh, to bring the structure into compliance. If the structure reverts to a commercial use, then it must meet all applicable commercial codes and occupancy requirements. And the special use will be voided at that time. Uh, and underneath those two, the maximum occupancy of uh, based on formulas contained within the statewide minimum building code will apply along with fire and life safety compliance on inspection. Uh, at their regular scheduled meeting uh, earlier this month, uh, the Planning and Zoning Board also uh, recommended conditional approval for staff conditions. We want to have to answer any questions. Any questions from the board? Thank you, Mr. Jacobs. This is a public hearing at this time. Is there anybody in the audience has any comments in regards to this rezoning request or special use request? Okay. Moving into item number seven, reserve. Receive comments regarding a request to amend the Unified Development Code of the City Group in Article 7, Section 7 of 4, Table 7.3, Infill Regulations to the Permitted Uses Allowed within the Residential Zoning District. Again, Director of Planning and Development, Chad Taylor, will address. Okay. Yeah, uh, we had a little discussion on this this morning. Uh, this is a uh, text amendment ordinance that we're looking to do here that would uh, satisfy one of our uh, strategic housing plan goals through the Archway Program for the uh, housing planning element. Uh, this will also uh, bring our uh, infill ordinance into play uh, when utilizing uh, existing vacant uh, 
lots that are zoned HDRA, HDRB, uh, allow this to be done as a matter of right uh, to use the infill um, language uh, within the UDC. And uh, we want to have to answer any questions. Any questions of board members? Mm -hmm. This again is a public hearing. Is there anybody that would like to come to the board to ask questions or the state in regards to this ordinance change? Okay. Moving into item eight, receive comments regarding an amendment to the code of ordinance of the city group in chapter 82 taxation, article seven, occupational tax and administrative fees, section 82-152 and 82-156, tax and license administrative fee and benefit for the drive as well. Hey, good evening. Good evening. Hope y'all had a great, great day. We did. Great, great day. So we saw each other. Um, so we would like to propose um, a, a tax amendment to Chapter 82 to change the occupational tax due date from April 1st to January 31st. As we discussed earlier this morning, um, that will help narrow down the time span that we spend on renewals so that I can focus on other duties with the city. Um, we are allowed by state law to um, have a due date earlier than what we do now. Um, as far as enforcement goes, as we discussed this morning, um, we can't uh, enforce the code um, until 90 days are passed. So that puts us late into the summer before we can start enforcing the code. So um, we would like to change that to January 31st. Do any of y'all have any questions? Any questions from Morgan? Again, this is a public hearing at this time. Does anybody in the audience like to come and address the board in regards to the um, amendment of the city code? Right. Moving into the consent agenda, we have items 9 through 12. We have, take, have a motion to take all as one. Mrs. Mm -hmm. Murray with a motion, second by Mr. Tinsley to take consent agenda to items 9 through 12. Murray motion, second by Tinsley. All in favor, please sit and raise your hand. Six zero on the consent agenda. Moving into the regular agenda. Consider um, item 13, consider the minutes of the City Griffin Board of Commissioners regular meeting on April 12th, 2022. Commissioner Murray and Tinsley were at training that evening. We have a motion to approve the minutes. Make a motion to approve the minutes. Mr. Ford with the motion, Mr. Brock with the second. All in favor, please sit and raise your hand. 402 with Tinsley and Murray abstaining. Item 14 is considered a request for a special use permit to allow for the use of a single family dwelling unit in planned commercial development PCD for property located at 214 South 12th Street. Mr. Second. Mr. McCord with a motion, second by Mrs. Murray. With those conditions, is that correct? Yes. With the conditions. All in favor, signify raise your hand. Six zero. Item 15 to consider amending the Unified Development Code of the City of Griffin, Article 7, Section 7 of the Table 7.3, and Bill Regulations to the permitted uses allowed in the residential zoning categories as a matter of right. With motion to approve. So moved. Mr. Tinsley with a motion. Mrs. Murray with a second. All in favor for change, please signify raise your hand. Six zero. Item 16 is consider on first reading amending this code of ordinance of the city of Griffin chapter 82 taxation article 7 occupational taxes and administrative fees section 82 152 through 82 156. With a motion to approve the change. Second. Mr. Brock with a motion, Mrs. Murray with a second. All in favor, please signify by raise your hand. Six zero. Item 17 is consider. Purchase of 10 3.84 TV solid state hard drives and associated software licensings to increase the storage capacity of this Griffin VX Rails private cloud service system and consider purchasing software licensing to increase Griffin's IDPA backup appliances by 12 TV of storage capacity from Dell, Georgia State contract in the amount of $68,923.90. One cent. We have a motion to approve. Mr. McCord with a motion. Second. Second by Mr. Tinsley. All in favor, please signal by raise your hand. Six zero. <coughs> Item 18 is consider the purchase and installation of a new network cabling for customer service in the courtroom in One Griffin Center from Net Planner Systems Inc. State contract in the amount of $29,932.22. Mr. McCord with a motion. Second. Second by Mrs. Murray. 
All in favor, please signal by raising your hand. 6 0. Item 19 is consider provisions of the City of Griffin's Internet Customer Master Service Agreement to include voice over internet protocol, VoIP, phone services, and a new rate structure for fiber internet customers. <clears throat> Consider resolution authorizing Chief Technology Officer and his designee to sign the same and appointing Chris Sprayberry as designee. So, Mr. Tinsley with motion to approve. Second. Second by Mr. Rock. All in favor, please signal by raising your hand. 6 0. Item 20 is consider purchase of a Dodge 1500 Tradesman's Quad Cap from Allen J. Fleet Sales, sole source. <coughs> In the amount of $34,770 for the side shell and amend the budget accordingly. The motion to depart. Mrs. Weston. Mrs. Murray with a motion. Can we get a second first? Second. One second by Ms. Ward. Go ahead. What model is this? Is this a 22 or 22? You good to go? Yeah. Okay. We have a motion from Ms. Murray, second by Ms. Ward. All in favor, please signal 6 0. Item 21 is concerning the City of Griffin Police Department building the 234 North Hill Street Kevin Jordan Public Safety Complex with signage installed at the front of the building. So, the motion of Mr. Tinsley, do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. McCord. Chief, do you want to say anything? Sure. Thank you, sir. With the new building that uh, you ladies and gentlemen provided for us we uh, wanted to select an appropriate name for it and recognize one of our uh, fallen officers so i was going to do the talking but uh thought maybe it would be best for homer to do it and uh, he offered so a few minutes to just kind of go through our process for how we selected that and give a little background i think would be appropriate if y'all indulge me for a couple of minutes. thank you Jim. Good evening. How are you doing? Good, sir. First of all, I'd like to say thank you for this honor. Thank you for Kevin, uh, for naming the building after Kevin Joy. Uh, he was a dedicated employee. But I want, I want to read you a little something, okay? Yes, sir. Uh, Officer Kevin Joy, at age 43, the father of seven children, was shot and killed in an execution matter while attempting to make an arrest. Um, Born to the soul of courage, which weather bad officer joint has been saving and serving and protecting the people of Griffin for years, for four years. After moving here from Chicago, uh, Kevin Jordan was sworn in as a Griffin police officer. I remember the day that Lieutenant James Richard brought us to him to, him to the police department. He said he wanted to be a police officer. He had worked at the Department of Corrections for a number of years. And uh, he was a really sharp guy, because we called him, but he had a nickname, Shogun. Standing tall, looking good, because he was always spit shining in pockets whenever we saw him. But more so than that, Kevin Jordan was a person of impact. He left a great impact in the community, dealing with children, old folks. And if you had a problem, uh, he made you feel better when he left talking to you. So, um, not only did he have an impact on the children, but he had an impact on uh, just his professionalism, his values. Um, you can see Kevin Jordan riding through town on a bicycle, because we had a bicycle detail, stopping tractor trailers. That was Kevin Jordan. So not only was he my friend, he was the officer, stand, y'all stand, the officers that were here, they were, he was their friend as well. Um, we had a lot of camaraderie. Like I said, at his funeral, my children would come to, they would find out what week he was working. They would come just to sit and listen and embrace whatever he was saying. So uh, Kevin Jordan was a hero. And uh, what happened to him was tragic, but he lives in all of our hearts. He lives on the back of the badges that we wear. And uh, like I said, I appreciate the opportunity uh, and I appreciate uh, the chief embracing the concept and the idea. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Chief Jason. Chief Daniels, since you're the seat shift, we appreciate you. It's hard to believe it's, I believe, 2014. Yes. And so we're six, eight years. Six, yeah, eight years. Coming up in May, anniversary coming up. Yeah. 
and our thoughts and prayers, and thank you for bringing this before us. Thank you. Anything else, Chief? You know, this would just be a lasting legacy. Uh, Council. We have a motion to Mr. Tenzi, a second by Mr. McCord for naming the public safety complex the Kevin Joyner Public Safety Complex. All in favor, please signal by raising your hand. Six zero. Chief, do, do we plan on having uh, a date that you're going to do that unveiling? Uh, Sarah, we can put something together to do okay. that. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how long the manufacturer of it. The sign that she's going to take, but we'll we'll get plenty of heads up for it. Okay. We are having ribbon cutting this Thursday. Great, great. We we were in hopes that uh, we might be able to do it all at the same time, but it was a there was a little bit more of a task involved to to do it than we thought, so we couldn't quite get it done quick enough. But we'll make sure that the opportunity to recognize things appropriately is, is set up after that. But we do appreciate it. Like I said, it is a lasting legacy that will go a long way for us. So thank you. Thank you all. Item 22 is consider approval of the notice of intent not to renew the multi year lease and end up agreement with Sonica Recycling LLC and authorize the city manager to execute and serve the notice of purpose of terminating the agreement. So we have a motion from Ms. McCord, second by Mrs. Murray. All in favor, please signal by raising your hand. Six zero. We'd like to table twenty three to do some corrections on the um, list of the land bank authority. <coughs> motion to table. This is Murray with a motion with a second. Second by Mr. Tinsley. All in favor, please signal by tabling this. Signal raise your hand. Six zero. Item twenty four is consider a renewal of the memorandum of understanding among the city of Griffin, Spalding County, Griffin, Spalding County. Board of Education and UGA Archway Partnership as the partners in the Spalding County Archway Partnership for fiscal year 23. Mrs. Murray with a motion with a second. Second by Mr. Tinsley. All in favor, please signal by raising your hand. Six zero. Do, do we still have someone here representing the Archway Yes, sir. She's not here all the time. We learned through COVID that we can work virtually more than we expected. So she does have an office here. She's here. On days that we have meetings and, and other days as well, but she's not here Monday through Friday, eight to five. So Brittany's saying that there is still our um, professional. Okay, moving to item 25, consider cancellation of the City Griffin Board of Commissioners June 28, 22 workshop and regular meeting due to commissioners attendance at GMA annual convention in Savannah, Georgia, June 24 through 28, 22. Do a motion to cancel the meeting? Second. Mrs. Murray with a motion, second by Mr. McCord. All in favor, please signal or raise your hand. Six, zero. All right, moving into city manager's report. Thank you. Thank you for uh, sticking with us this morning and for someone at the weekly meeting tonight as well. Um, I know I don't like to put that much on y'all, but I think it was a very beneficial meeting this morning as well as this afternoon, so I appreciate that. Um, First, just sort of let me reiterate my thanks and appreciation to the employees and the departments that were recognized tonight. Those are some pretty big awards that is, um, I think we talked to where it's still great this afternoon. We actually took them once to go connect their award winners. So this is very few as it happened back to back to win um, that award. And they said they'll be the first ones to win three in a row. So we hope that uh, Dr. Keller will come back and join us next year for another award. Um, and as Mr. Schwab said, the GFOA budget presentation award is for last year's budget. So we have not been able to present a budget that sales don't present the way that they want you to do that. Um, but with the purchase of our new software, although I'm pulling my hair out with a nail, um, it is helpful in making that a lot more transparent to the public. So I'm excited to see that recognition. And what he didn't mention is it's very uncommon to get that the first time you submit it for a budget presentation award. So he was expecting two or three tries before he got that award. So I'm very appreciative of that as well. And of course, Ms. Bagwell, she sort of said it best with her Maya Angelou quote, and I appreciate Commissioner Ward for nominating her and recognizing that. I think there's several <coughs> constituents that would not have otherwise been able to be helped with the CARES Act money that we were able to give our, our citizens. So that was very important to recognize her. And then last but not least, some recognitions, Ms. Bartholomew and Ms. Tremel. Um, I could not get through any day without the two of them. So I'm glad that we're able to recognize them for Municipal Clerks Week. And of course, the graduates of the Citizens Fire Academy as well. 
a couple dates to remember. You'll have these in your email, but we have our Hall of Fame induction for Janet Harmon Bragg on Saturday at six o'clock at Mr. Tolan's hangar at the airport. Um, Brant's retirement party, he's going to kill me for mentioning it, is Friday from 2 to 4. It is a drop-in, but I would love to see everybody sort of there around 2.30 if we can get a picture with you. Um, we have noticed recently that we've received a little bit more complaints in regards to street lights, and I think that is actually a good thing because what is happening right now is we are doing an audit and a repair. Uh, we have a policy that has been in place for a long time in Griffin Power that there is supposed to be a street light on every other pole. And either that really hadn't been the case or they had been out. Um, so it is lit up in some areas of town that have not been in a long time. And I think other areas that we haven't gotten to yet have noticed and are starting to call. So that's good. We are getting to them. Please let your constituents know if you're getting those complaints that the entire city will be done by this calendar year and everybody will be nice and lit and LED'd um, before we finish this calendar year. Uh, as well, the Highway 16 East <laughs> is almost done. We have to have that turned on by the end of next month. Um, one other thing to note is filming. We had, uh, if you'll remember, somewhat of a bad experience about a month ago with a downtown production crew. I received a lot of calls and complaints, and I think you all did as well. Uh, Ms. Bennett and I met with them yesterday all the way up to their actual line production manager. There were about six of them and then herself, me, and Chad on that call. Um, we think that was very productive. They are coming back. It's a seven or eight series episode series. So we told them they would not be getting another permit until they understood our expectations. We think that that went well yesterday and look forward to having a much better experience with them in a few weeks. We also have a film crew that is asking to reserve um, some property that we own near Experiment Street. It's a bunch of vacant land. It's actually a long term for us, couple month location agreement. So we normally just sign those in house. We'll still do that, but I wanted to give you a heads up. That's a lot more <coughs> extensive than we've dealt with in the past, just in terms of length. And that is it. Thank you, Ms. O'Connor. Mm -hmm. Mr. Whalen. I was very pleased to go to the Superior Court this morning to call the county where the judge did validate your City of Griffin Combined Public Utility Refunding Revenue Bond Series 2022. So we'll be closing that in the near future. And I think the city will see some substantial savings in this action. Very pleased with it. Thank you, Mr. Wyman. Mr. Brock. Well, I'm surprised you hadn't already said something about this, but I think we had a great, great turnout by the cop tournament this past weekend. It was my, it was my anniversary, so I sent Doug in my place. So he was gonna, he's going to talk to me. Don't steal his thunder. Okay, well, I was, out, I, know, I was out of town, and I talked to some of the golfers. They thoroughly enjoyed it. The meal was super duper good. So that's how we go to the egg sometimes. We're going to get better and better as we go on. Thank you, Mr. Brock. Mrs. Murray. Another thing I have to say, thank you everyone for being here. And it looks like April was, or I guess all the month that led up to all the awards that you all received tonight, shows just how busy and productive and successful that you all make us and our city. And so we couldn't have that with all the great leadership and Jessica and Drew and our board and it, uh, you all through the uh, success. It gives me a makes it easier for me to serve and uh, I'm honored to be here because of you all. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Murray. Mrs. Ward, Mr. Mr. Gordon. I've got two quick things. Um, <clears throat> number one, I, I brought it to the city manager's attention. She gave me a very great answer and what I told the people I would mention so be in our minutes about a decriminalization of marijuana. Um, as I've said before, there's nothing that this board can do to legalize uh, marijuana. It does not come from the city level because if it did, it would be a lot of other things that would go before that. But um, something that if people will call in, they want to discuss that with our police department, with our city manager, we have a, a, an answer in place. So feel free to call her. She is very versed in the law, and she would do a good job of explaining it to you. Second thing, I had a person to ask me about uh, 25 mile per hour speed limits inside our city. 
And how many of those do we have? Like, are they just in the school zone areas? I, no, I know I the, list, the best thing to do would be to direct them to Muni code in chapter 90 is our uh, traffic and vehicles code. There is a list of streets um, in that article two, which is uniform rules of the road. It says, well, like, I'm sorry, article three is speed zones. How do you have all this stuff just read it like this? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm well versed. I see, I see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's the, the streets that we have that we do speed detection on are listed in section 90 61. It tells you the speed limit, it tells you the miles, it tells you where it starts, and it tells you the length. So I would refer them directly to that code section. 90 61. Yes, sir. The best. Thank you so much. I'll send you the um, link. All right. Uh, and I think that's, that's all I have. Congratulations to all the award winners and just a, a quick side note. Um, the Kevin Jordan naming of the police station, and I think Corey and I pointed this out back in 2014 when it happened. I, I can't think of a single event, um, be it as tragic as it was, that brought all of our community together. Um, when the time of that happened with Mr. Jordan, I remember driving a uh, film procession from, um, I think it was, what's the name of the trail? Oak Hill. And the streets were lined um, with a multicultural, um, all of Griffin came out. And as far as you could drive, you could see people on the side of the road that honored and everything that uh, Officer Daniel, Chief Daniel said about um, Kevin Jordan was, was correct. I mean, he, he was a guy, just a, a, a man's man, a people's person, and um, just a, a, a loving spirit. And I think is well deserving. And I, I think it says just a, a lot about our community, regardless of where we sit. Otherwise, when it comes to our people and our community, we are all one group. So <coughs> thank you to the board and whoever came up with this idea of, of such a great honor for Mr. Jordan. Thank you. Got several things. First, um, our thoughts and prayers are with you, Ms. Ward, and your family that lost your mother. Um, she must have been an amazing woman to raise you because you're an amazing woman. We're just very proud of you. Our thoughts have been with you. Um, I, I just rolled off the uh, diversity, equity, inclusiveness task force for George Municipal Association, but I got rolled on to the new advisory board. So my first meeting is tomorrow down in Macon. But one of the, I understand from our uh, edit team that they're planning to be the first government to be a platinum city of equity and inclusiveness. And some of those requirements require us to have um, our board members trained, the three hour report of training that's coming up. So, um, Ms. O'Connor had sent out an email about training that Ms. Ward and I are signed up, but if you have a chance to go, and Ms. Murray is, okay, so that's three. So um, over the next six months, um, as this as the rollout comes from GMA, we'd like to be able to brag and say that Griffin's number one of um, becoming recognized as a community of equity and inclusiveness. The uh, reservoir cleanup was amazing. I want to give a shout out to the Environmental Council. I actually got a letter today and I forwarded it to some of our staff members from a citizen in the county complaining about how trashy it was. And I said, go back and look at it after they got done with it this past weekend. I don't know, do you know how many tons y'all picked up? Or was it? Two and a half tons. How much? Two and a half. Two and a half tons of trash and tires. Half of the roll off the tires. And so uh, it was a great event and the Environmental Council is working towards developing a park out there and possibly walking trails and how we can have that as an asset for our community. Uh, the Renai America Manufacturing um, ribbon cutting last week was absolutely amazing. They call themselves Ram at the Lakes is their name, but um, they're over over 250 employees and they're already looking at expansion and it's just an amazing um, oper uh, operation. They don't do any welding like they were doing five years ago. Now it all gets cooked in the ovens in terms of their manufacturing process in regards to soldering the copper. It's just a spectacular asset. And they're also one of the community partner. They've already partnered with us on Made in Griffin as being one of our sponsors um, for that event coming up. Dyer City Golf Classic was an amazing event. The staff did a great job, heard nothing but um, compliments and praise. I did end up from one of our, I always have an inner bet with one of our um, city employees whenever we play golf, and I got my 50 pennies again. 
So the, the collection is adding up with that young man. Maybe I'll win him back because I'll shank one later on sometime. But um, Iris City Golf Classic was first class. And do we have an idea how much money was raised at this point? I don't know yet. Okay, so there was a significant amount of money raised for the children, Baptist Children's Home program. Fruit Truck Flying was a great success. So great comments on social media. So again, staff, outstanding job. Saturday morning, Ms. Ward and I attended the Quarry's Edge Park dedication on, on Quilly Street. The nickname is The Q, and so we have a new park that's partially lays in the city of Griffin. Um, so if you get a chance to go out there and walk and go and look at the quarry, another great asset for our community. And, the, um, and then we had multiple city employees at all of these events throughout the weekend giving their time, their energy, and serving this community. So just a big shout out to all the different employees, whether it's at the reservoir cleanup, the golf tournament, fly-in, folks were out there serving, and it was just great to see um, the passion that our, our staff is having towards our community. And finally, heartbreaking, um, but Dr. Brent Keller, this is your last official meeting as an employee and of the city of Griffin, and you've been here since basically since I came back to Griffin and you've just been a mentor to so many folks. You've been a blessing to so many folks. You, um, the knowledge, your passion, your love of Griffin and Spalding County is, um, is uh, amazing. And uh, we are all a better community for your dedication and hard work. I just want to tell you publicly for the minutes that uh, we thank you and I'd like for us all to give you a round of applause. that even though Drew is only six months older than me, he's been a mentor and has enjoyed working with him. We've been in the Supreme Court together. We've been to the bond markets together, and he really helped my career. And I just want to say thanks to Drew. Awesome, sir. We have a lot to celebrate in this great town of Wood Griffin. So with that being said, the motion adjourns. Make a motion to adjourn. Mr. McCord made a motion second by Mrs. Murray. All in favor, please leave. Thank you.